Um, all right, so Josh is ready to go and get this started. Now, as I, spoke to you, as I spoke to you guys as far as doing these problems, it's very important, it's very helpful. You will have graphing technology on there. I asked you guys to do the rational zero test, again, just as a practice, because this is important. If you guys do your um, product of your factors, which are going to be plus or minus 20, comma, plus or minus 10, comma, plus or minus 5, comma, plus or minus 4, comma, plus or minus 2, comma, plus or minus 1, and that's all over really plus or minus 1. So if I have a real 0, right, a real rational 0, not irrational, not complex, a real rational 0, it's going to be one of these numbers. Now when I graph it, I notice that I do have a rational 0, which ended up being 5. So what I can do with that is if I know I, if I have a 0, then I can apply division, and the quotient is also going to provide me with another factor. So I do long, I do uh, synthetic division, because I prefer doing synthetic division than long division. And I'll just kind of work through this a little bit quicker. OK, so I get my remainder constant, linear, quadratic. So therefore, if 5 is a 0, that means x minus 5 is my factor. And then this is my other factor, which is x squared plus 4. And then remember, that times that, this times this gives me my original polynomial, just like 3 times 2 gives me 6. However, the question is asking AJ to find all the zeros. So that means I need to set my factors equal to 0. We already know x is equal to 5. Here, this is even easier. You don't even have to factor this one, right? That's nice. Thank you, Ms. Grell. That's a good problem. So therefore, but now you need to use the square root method, which is, again, was something that we talked about in our focus lessons. Subtract 4 on both sides. x squared equals negative 4. And then to undo the squaring, you have to take the square root. And you have to remember, whenever you introduce the square root, you have to include plus or minus 2i. Always include plus or minus. And that's very important. Because if you didn't do that, Junho, if you just did the positive, then how many zeros would you have? You'd have 2i and 5. And how many zeros are we supposed to have? 3, right? So that's why that plus or minus is so, so important to make sure you guys remember whenever you introduce the square root, you have to include that plus or minus. So I also want you guys to recognize that these 2i, these come together. Um, these are what we call conjugate pairs. So whenever you have a positive i, you're going to have the negative i, just like the square root. If you have a, like a square root of 5 or a square root, square root of 5, you're going to have a negative square root of 5. 